Welcome to our class, Technology Transfer, Do-It-Yourself or Hired Gun. Today we have three presenters. We have Laura Shoppy, President of Fuentech. Laura? Hi there. Good morning or afternoon. Um, as Andrea said, my name is Laura Shoppy. I'm the President of Fuentech, and we're an intellectual asset management firm. So we help our clients, which could be government agencies, corporations, or universities, soup to nuts in the process of looking at their technology, from technology spin out to infusion. Um, I started my career off in the defense industry doing submarine and surface ship combat systems as well as uh, doing missile plume intelligence work and then realized that I wanted to be doing something different, moved to North Carolina, and that's when I learned how to spell commercialization um, and learned that Tech transfer is a whole lot tougher than doing straight technology development. Bridging that gap between the two things is, is a lot tougher than it sounds. I also serve as the Vice President for Strategic Alliance at Autumn, which is the Association of University Technology Managers. Um, and uh, John will mention that he also works for that group. It's a great group. And one of the things that we recently launched is the Global Technology Portal. So any of you that have technologies that you are trying to market and are Autumn members, I hope that you will post your technologies on Autumn's GTP. The website's gtp.autumn.net. Andrea? And I'm Andrea Atkins. I'm an Assistant Director in UCF's Office of Technology Transfer. I've been working at UCF since 1999. I started at UCF working in the Contracts and Grants group, and I switched over to Tech Transfer and I enjoy the commercialization role. And like Laura, I didn't even know what tech transfer meant when I, when I started working at UCF. Uh, and now I've come to love the whole concept of technology transfer and commercialization. Prior to working at UCF, I worked in the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. I like working with engineers, and that's part of my role at UCF, working with the College of Engineering and the Material Sciences group. I also happen to love dogs, as some of you know from this class, looking at uh, uh, the proposal I've prepared. Some of you have provided really good feedback. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, John. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm John Miner. I'm also an assistant director for Tech Transfer here at the University of Central Florida. I'm a UCF alum. I came here in 96 as a freshman, and I started working in the Office of Research in 1997. Uh, mostly doing, you know, normal student activity work, printing documents, delivering them in the golf cart, et cetera. And then I started doing technology transfer in 1999. Uh, I started uh, slowly just doing some database entry work and then found my place in the world, and I've been doing tech transfer uh, here at UCF ever since. Um, I'm, a, like Laura had mentioned, I'm an active member of Autumn. Uh, I'm the associate vice president one of the associate vice presidents for metrics. Um, I am also chairing the annual salary survey, which is an a annual publication done every two years uh, to track, monitor, and report on the salaries and compensation for tech transfer professionals uh, in the U.S., uh, North America, Canada, uh, Europe, and Asia. Um, it's, a, it's a, I think, a, a, a good survey. It helps out our, our staff, our membership, and uh, I very much like volunteering uh, with us. All right. Um, well, Laura, to start off the discussion, could you maybe tell us a little bit about your company, uh, Fuentech, and the services that you provided to NASA and maybe some of the roles that you all played? Sure. So. Fuentech is an intellectual asset management firm, which means we have engineers and scientists as well as market researchers and publication specialists to help our clients, um, which could, in this case, NASA, in the case of your question, um, take a look at their technologies and identify where else those technologies could be used. So the engineering and the science capability comes into play in really understanding what that technology can enable, and then we marry that with the business acumen to figure out how to communicate that technology to potential licensees or partners so that they understand what's better, faster, or cheaper about that. And that's the part that I find much more challenging to do than uh, 
than the straight engineering project work I used to do in the early part of my career, um, really bridging that gap and helping people see the value uh, in what a technology could do for them is not just challenging but also very rewarding. Um, then we also develop the marketing materials to help communicate that and solicit that interest back. And we can also provide the deal support in analyzing the offers and providing counter negotiation um, suggestions and things like that. We also do a lot of the publications work on the back end, um, getting awards, publicizing the great work that the tech transfer office has done. Those are all the things that, that we've done for NASA um, and looked at their entire portfolio and helped organize it. In addition to that, we also help them with what's called technology infusion, and that's finding solutions that already exist out there for specific problems that they have. So for NASA, we probably use the greatest portion of our services, um, as well as helping them look for new strategic ways in developing partnerships, both for infusion as well as for uh, licensing out. I just want to add to that, Laura. Um, your, your organization actually profiled uh, one of the UCF technologies that was funded by NASA, the development work, one of our wireless sensing technologies. Um, and you had a great profile on your website um, about our technology or the website that you were building for NASA. Yeah. Um, and it brought a lot of attention to UCF uh, for that technology. And I'm still hoping for a big license. Um, but, but your services were excellent um, that you provided for NASA. It did help UCF. Thank you. Yeah, we um, often will run across projects that will be for both NASA as well as their, their partners in helping get the word out, uh, usually more on the success story side. Well, I'm going to switch uh, organizations and ask you, Laura, um, how has your company supported university technology transfer activities? In certain ways, it's very similar to what we've done with NASA, and in other ways, it's different. Um, so with the universities, it tends to be very um, traditional IP management services, so screening through their IP portfolio, uh, helping identify those technologies that have the highest market potential, um, and then developing the marketing strategy through what we call an assessment, and then actually marketing those technologies and supporting in the negotiation process. So. Um, it's really just on the technology licensing side of things, where with NASA we've done a lot more publications work, uh, success story writing, infusion work. On the university side, it is strictly on the, the technology push side of things. Um, for several universities, what we've done is really gone through their entire portfolio and strategically help them organize it and identify which technology areas were strengths for them and which ones were weaknesses, therefore allowing them to really cull down their portfolio to the technologies that had the highest potential. Because every time you touch a technology, it's expensive. It takes time away from doing other things. And so the more you can do to filter down to the highest potential, the better. And as you guys both know, most tech transfer offices and universities are woefully understaffed and their portfolios are huge. So anything you can get to, to bring that down um, can be very beneficial. And then the other aspect is doing a lot of the legwork of bringing vetted marketing opportunities back to them. Uh, the professors are very busy. Tech transfer managers are, are holding large portfolios. So if you can bring to them specific technologies or specific companies interested in technologies, that really alleviates their burden. So John, has UCF used consultants or hired guns? And if so, in what role have you used them? Yes, we used, um, we've used consultants over the years. The first one uh, that we used was probably around 1999 or 2000. We used a company called Stack, the Southern Technology Application Center. And they came in after the uh, director left uh, UCF and went to a different university. And um, there really wasn't any staff save for a young student who was just getting started in tech transfer. Uh, so Stack came in and um, helped us with setting up sort of a process flow, um, you know, addressing some of our database concerns, you know, data management. Uh, they laid out some plans for, um, you know, management to come in and, and, and just helped us sort of get the 
um, Tech Transfer Office back on its feet. Uh, they provided a staff member who came in and, 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 and worked the office um, and then provided advice on how to move forward and helped us hire uh, the, the next director uh, that came in and we brought them in from, from industry. Um, you know, we've used other consultants for um, technology brokering, so we've had some companies who uh, saw a portfolio of ours or a set of technologies and thought that they could market them or uh, otherwise get them out to the right people for licensing. Um, we've had some success with that. And, um, you know, I, I, those are really the primary roles that we've had for consulting. Um, we've not used any licensing auditors or uh, anything like that. I mean, uh, we do use outside attorneys for a patent prosecution. So, uh, in a sense, that's a, a consultant or hired gun because um, we don't do our own in-house prosecution. But that, that's about the extent of our uh, consultations. John, do you believe that there are technology transfer roles that must be filled by university employees versus a higher gun? Yes, uh, I definitely think that the director, the licensing associates, uh, these folks are pretty imperative to a, a, a tech transfer office. Um, having someone that the faculty can always get a hold of and know that that's their, uh, that's their representative, I think is, is really important. I think there's a lot of other uh, positions which can kind of come and go or ebb and flow as the need is presented within a tech transfer office, but having that core um, group that, that direct, the directors uh, level folks and the licensing associates, um, you know, those are, those are really important. And, and you cannot over uh, or underestimate the importance of a good uh, technology manager, someone that can help process uh, invoicing and just keep their finger on the pulse of the prosecution for um, the office. Because like Laura was saying, you know, uh, portfolios are huge and the staff is um, generally over uh, extended in most tech transfer offices. So having a, a key person that's good at, um, at, at, at managing, uh, I think that's also another role that's, that's pretty important to have uh, in-house. Andrea, I'd like to echo um, what John was just saying about that, that uh, you really want to make sure that you've got that on the ground relationship building with your innovators, and that's something that an outside consultant really uh, can't can't do for you. Um, so you you also want to make sure that that person on site is the final authority and decision maker on who's getting what license and why, because there's more to those decisions than just what the market says. So an outside consultant can really help you be arms and legs, and they can also help you be strategic, but um, the final decision making really needs to be in house, and the relationship building needs to be in house. Thanks, Laura. Um, could you maybe give us the other side of the coin and uh, and give us an idea of what roles do you think would be best served by the outside consultants? Yeah. Um, well, as I was just commenting, I think um, being arms and legs. So when you're in the early stages of taking a look at that portfolio, you get so many invention disclosures coming in. You want to make sure that you cull that down to the technologies that have the highest potential. Well, that's not necessarily a value add for an on-site um, tech manager to do. That's something you really can outsource to get the homework done so that the tech manager can make a better and more educated decision on what they want to move forward with and what they really need to release or, or passively market. And so being the arms and legs um, is absolutely a great role for a consultant. The other aspect of that is that an outside firm such as ourselves, we've got 30 people on staff, so we're going to have a technical breadth that a three-person office is not likely going to be able to duplicate. And so when you've got technologies that span anywhere from life science to aerospace, um, it's very difficult for in-house people to really get their hands around that, understand it, and understand the markets where you can use an outside consultant in it, that specific field to really get a much better understanding of it. They can also provide you with a, a lot of good strategic support because, um, such as in our case, we're working with corporations as well as universities, so we see both sides of the coin. And so we can help you and see where they're coming from and what things they may be interested in when you're negotiating a deal. 
as well as putting together the portfolio as a whole. Uh, we can be pretty objective, and we can also be the bad guy. So if you've got to call down that, uh, that portfolio and say, these are technologies we're moving forward with and these are technologies we're not, uh, telling the, the professor we're not going to do anything with your technology at this time can often be a lot easier if you've got a report from an outside group that said, based on the market, this is why we're not moving forward, but here's some information that might be useful for you as you look at your next round of, um, of research. Uh, it's an unfortunate reality, but sometimes having an outsider say your baby's ugly is a lot easier to take than having your own internal uh, advocate say it. So, Laura, I guess uh, kind of the, the converse of that. So, do you do you believe that in your experience that absolutely certain roles in tech transfer should be filled by in-house employees of a university, let's say, or a federal office? Yeah, the the lead decision maker absolutely needs to be um, on site. They have to have the final authority and the best interest of the institution in mind. So, whether that's the the director or the tech transfer managers, um, that final decision point has to be on site. And then also the financial controls of you know, who's cutting the contracts and things like that um, should be managed. Now, that doesn't mean you can't outsource some aspects of having audits done, but again, final authority should always reside in-house, and anybody who's got the, the relationship building responsibility with both innovators as well as the companies in order to establish potential sponsored research in the future should also be in-house. So Andrea, have you hired any kind of uh, outside experts or consultants to help you in your tech transfer activities? Well, actually right now I'm in the process of hiring uh, an outside business consultant. Um, UCF uh, is going to be submitting along with one of its newest start out or spin out companies uh, startup or spin out companies. We're going to be submitting to NIH on April the 4th an SBIR grant. It's about $300,000. And uh, UCF and another university uh, and the, the spin out company um, are all on this proposal. And I've found um, a business consultant that I think will be an excellent advisor not only for the content of the proposal and the strategy for trying to land the first grant through the small business, but I think he's going to be an asset uh, after the proposal submission and trying to help the startup company get together a business plan and focus what resources it currently has from the investment group in the best way possible for the first year before the external funding, uh, the grant funding starts. UCF is in a very fortunate position in that we have a program here called the Venture Lab that helps the community entrepreneurs come and present ideas and get coaching and counseling for their, their ideas and their businesses. We have the Venture Lab um, funded in part with local government, Orange County government. And Orange County and UCF jointly fund this operation and there's funding made available by Orange County to hire consultants and coaches. And in this particular technology, it's going to be a, a pharmaceutical. Um, I'm hoping that this businessman who has led a large pharmaceutical company and done some other impressive uh, professional acts in his experience, uh, I'm hoping that we can get him under contract. Uh, we're, we're almost finished with it, and I'm hoping to have it done today so that he can start reviewing this proposal and really help us going forward um, to find other funding opportunities to maybe bring in some investment capital from some high wealth individuals that he knows from his experience. Uh, I'm just, you can tell I'm really excited about being able to do this and having the funding available to do it. It's, it's a great benefit, I think. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Stay tuned, I'll let you know how it goes. John, let me ask you, um, you mentioned earlier that you've been the head of the, the survey committee uh, for Autumn. Does Autumn track any outside consultant use in any of its surveys? Not, not at this time. You know, the, the primary surveys that uh, Autumn is working on are the licensing survey, which goes out every year and all the organizations 
Uh, all the member organizations participate in that by uh, reporting their research funding, their licensing activity, you know, patent applications, uh, patents issued, uh, the normal metrics of technology transfer, uh, how many spin-out companies, et cetera. Um, but they don't attribute, uh, they don't request or ask anything about the office structure other than how many employees uh, are in there. Now, the salary survey concentrates on the about 10 position descriptions that are recognized uh, by Autumn uh, as the core positions for technology transfer, directors, assistant associate directors, licensing associate, business managers, in-house counsel, et cetera. And um, it, it does not focus on external uh, consultants. There's also an MTA survey that uh, tracks material transfer agreements. Um, but this is something that, uh, you know, Autumn is always looking for papers and speakers for their conferences. Uh, this may be one of those um, situations where we maybe want to start tracking. Um, all the consultants are usually at the conferences anyhow. Um, uh, like Laura, she's uh, always uh, presenting at Autumn. I mean, her, you know, journals are being uh, used uh, by Autumn Publications. So, uh, you know, these folks are there. They're service providers. Um, but, you know, there's, I don't know that there's any uh, metric that's been collected to see just how much uh, impact they provide or, you know, how many are being used or how many institutions use them. But it might be something good for the future to bring up. All right. Well, this concludes our discussion today on technology transfer, do-it-yourself, or hired consultants. John and I would like to thank Laura Shoppe of Flentec for taking the time to share her expertise with us. Uh, if you have any questions after this uh, discussion, uh, please give John, me, or Laura a call or send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks thank you all so much for taking the time. Thank you. Bye-bye.